Do you want to become a software engineer but don't have a clue on where to start? Fear not, because we live in a world where knowledge is accessible to everyone and the best part is it's completely free. And in this video I'm going to show you how you can go from zero with no computer science degree, no boot camps and no prior experience. Now let me show you how you can do it too. Most of you who are just starting to learn about coding probably don't have a clue about what coding actually is. Most people think that coding is just typing a bunch of complicated words on a computer, trying to get it to do something. And that's essentially what programming is. You speak into a computer and tell it what to do. But then again, what does it mean to be a software engineer? As a software engineer, for most of your life, you're going to be inside sitting at a computer. Now, that certainly isn't suitable for most humans. I mean, we weren't made to be sitting at a desk for 8 hours a day. So, before we even start, if that doesn't sound too enticing to you, maybe this career isn't the right one for you. And in this video we are looking at the hard truths about being a software engineer and not just the highlights. Before we start, you must understand that in any job, especially in this one, there is a give and a take, good and bad, which brings us to the internal question. If being a software engineer is all good sunshines and rainbows, then why do most of those people who portray it like that end up quitting their job to do something else full time? In this case, YouTube or freelancing. People who truly enjoyed coding had a bigger picture in mind and accepted all the negatives and at the same time appreciated all of the positives that the job brought them. Because for these people, it wasn't just a job, it was their whole career, their future. They saw it as being a part of something much bigger than themselves and it's why they never quit. When it comes to being a software engineer as a whole, most YouTubers portray it like eating, typing, eating, typing, eating, meeting, eating. And on the surface, it's all generally positive because they know that if you're to finish watching that video to the end, they have to hide or cover up the things that might make you click off the video. So most people end up with this mindset that coding is easy, fun, and there's no drawbacks to it. So they start learning how to code and from 100% of people who started, only 0.1% actually keep going and end up getting their first job, but most of them still quit after a while because it's the complete opposite of what they've imagined. So then, what do you need to know in order to become a software engineer? Well, after going on Google, I found out that coding is something you must know in order to even be considered a software engineer. So I googled how to learn to code and I came up with a couple of free resources like Python for everybody and the Odin project. The former introduces you to Python, one of the most popular languages of the day, and Odin introduces you to web programming. It teaches you how to build a simple web page using HTML, CSS and JS. And the stuff about how the internet actually works and what it actually means to open a web page on your computer. And for all of you who are looking to take it a step further, you should check out Harvard University's CS50, which you can do for free on EDX. Long story short, it's an excellent course. In fact, it's one of the best courses out there covering computer science. And you will come out of this course wanting to consume all the information out there. But before you decide to jump the bucket, understand that CS50 is hard. Coding in general is hard. The thing is, you need to like working on difficult problems. And by the way, this kind of problem solving is not for everyone. And that's completely fine. The problems at the end of the course will absolutely kick your ass. So you'll really need to embrace the challenge. From this course, you will learn the C programming language, which will introduce you to the lower level of implementation of all the functions you would take for granted in a program like Python. The course also covers Python, so you'll get even more comfortable with it as well. You'll also get introduced to web programming. You'll also learn more about it in the Odin project. You'll get introduced to using databases, SQLite, but above all, it teaches you the fundamentals of how computers work. 
This is what many people when learning coding neglect, especially if they are self-taught. But it's super important to get at least some kind of understanding on how computers actually work because that will make you a better programmer down the road. Now the difference between computer science and programming is that computer science studies how computers work, programming is how to tell computers to do the things that you want them to. So the better you understand computers, the better you will be as a software engineer. Now, as the final project for CS50, you're going to be building a full-fledged application using all the stuff you've learned from the course. So, at this stage, you will essentially know how to code. You will be able to build simple things. It's going to be a struggle, but you will have the understanding of what it means to build a front end of the website and what it means to build the back end of the website. You will know what sort of languages are used for all of this to actually go and connect the front and the back end using a framework like Flask, which is an app you will use in the course. But if you want to get even better at web programming, you take the CS50's follow-up course. CS50 is web programming with Python and JavaScript. And this course is essentially the continuation of the already exciting and engaging style of CS50. But it's even more focused on web programming specifically, rather than computer science as a whole. Warning, this one moves at an even faster pace than CS50. CS50 is already hard, but the continuation is even harder. Pretty much every single week, you're gonna be building full-fledged web applications this time using the Django framework. It's really going to push you to get better but the great thing is that every single week you're building an actual application which you can then put on your portfolio later to apply for jobs. Again they're simple compared to what you could build if you've been a software engineer for a long time but still for entry level jobs they don't really require that elaborate stuff. Now, you might be asking, well, how long is this going to take? If you put in a couple hours each day, it should take you around four to six months depending on your overall understanding of the course. But if you're not able to learn every day, that's fine. If you can only manage it a couple times a week, it should take you around eight to 12 months to finish it. And again, it all depends on you. Once again, when I say that you will learn to code, I don't mean that you're going to become a master or anything like that. What I mean is that you will know enough to build simple things and get your foot in the industry and hopefully get your first job. This all sounds like fun and games, but how do you actually get your first entry level job? The first problem most people face are job postings. Forget all the things I said in this video. You're never going to feel like you're ready for any of these programming jobs if you just pay attention to the job listings because of just how poorly those job postings are actually done because they are done by HR people. In this listing, they want you to know everything. They don't just want you to be a Java developer or Java Spring Boot developer knowing TypeScript and Angular. They also want you to know the entire MERN stack and MIN stack and LAMP stack and SQL, which is not that unheard of. Basically, every single other technology that's involved with web development for a quote unquote entry level web development job. And then you get the job and you're making WordPress sites for clients and not doing any custom plugins for custom teams. So why are the job listings like that? Probably because the HR person asks what's their position, goes on Google and searches what do developers need to know and they see them having all these skills and you know they want the best. So they just take all of them and plop them on their job listing. A word of advice, ignore most of the skills required for a job listing. If that job is requiring you to be a entry level web developer, do just a little bit more research and you can find what stack they use. Do some research into people who are actually developers on that team or for that company. Or take a look at the project if you already know about what kind of project they're working on. And you can use a tool like Build with Technology Profiler, use that, and it can tell you what the website or web app is built with and if that's the project you will be working on and you go from there. But still, don't apply for that job if you don't have the necessary skills and sure, you may be a quick learner or have a good portfolio to back you up then fine, but otherwise don't go for that job if you don't have the necessary skill set required. Apply for a job that you do have the skills for, kind of makes sense right? If you like this video and found it informative, make sure to share this video to more aspiring software engineers, like the boost the algorithm and subscribe to join a community of like-minded people.